everyone, welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and I'm from New Leaf Designs, and I'll put my social media handles right here. Uh, and I'm noticing some new followers this week, so hi! If you aren't subscribed yet to my channel, please do um, check the button if you're subscribed or not. And I think a lot of new followers are coming from Jody and Tracy, the grocery girls, who graciously mentioned me on their podcast last week, which was very exciting. <laughs> um, they, uh, I offered to send them two copies of the Subtle Sock Collection for a giveaway, and um, I was watching their podcast live last week. Uh, just with a big grin on on my face the whole time. It was just very surreal. And um, yeah, thank you so so much, girls. Um, if you are watching this podcast and you haven't heard of the Grocery Girls yet, go on and watch them. <laughs> um, they are really really hilarious, and uh, their podcasts are a tad long, but um, they are the perfect companion if you have a lot of knitting to do. Um, and you're just home alone and you know even if you just want background noise but they're much more entertainable uh entertaining <laughs> they're much more entertaining than uh just background noise so um yes i love watching their podcast so hi welcome just another thing before i start showing you what i have been making uh in this podcast you might see some ads because that helps me run my business. If you see some ads, please just let them play. Don't skip them. That helps me the most. So thank you. Uh, and with that, let's get on with this week's knitting. Yes, it's just, well, it's knitting and embroidery. So yeah, I also have been crocheting some things, but I can't show you. So that's for a future episode. So first up, the home hat. The pattern is done. And you have seen this hat a couple times. Oh, it's getting really dark, isn't it? I have two lamps here and candles, <laughs> but it's getting really dark. It's only like four o'clock. Um, the home hat, which is my new free pattern, is on my blog. And I love this hat. I wore it on a couple of our walks because it's getting quite chilly here. And this is my first colorway, which is blue and, no, not blue, purple and green. And this is my second colorway, which is, it's very orange right now because of the candles. But um, yes, orange and blue. And the pattern, so um, the free pattern is up on my blog, which is newleafdesigns.nl. The pattern includes charts for both of these hats. So the exact charts that I, um, you know, for the exact sample that I knit. Um, and you can see that the hat is built up um, from smaller patterns and you can mix and match them or you can just choose one that you like and repeat that or a little bit crazy hair right now um, or you can knit them exactly as is and yes so the home hat pattern is up right now on my blog new leaf designs for free um, in English and in Dutch and you can also get the PDF version in my Ravelry shop and in my own New Leaf web shop, which is also on newleafdesigns.nl. Um, the PDF pattern doesn't have any ads. It's just, um, um, it's one language because the blog post is English and then the Dutch pattern um, kind of mixed in, which might be confusing for some, but it's just, it's, it's not the only way I could be doing it, but for me, it works uh, the best. And um, if you want to completely separate the two languages so you don't get confused, you can get the PDF pattern. Um, yeah, and it's an easy printable, and you support a female-owned business, so yay! <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I'll drop the link below um, to the Ravelry page. 
and from there you can either purchase the pattern or you can um, go to the free pattern so yes and talking about hats I was working on this brioche hat last week and I think I finished it that day um, on the um, Thursday that I podcasted and this is the hat it's the waiting to flower hat by Kirsten Kapoor and oh, it's just gorgeous it's just I wish I hadn't blocked this I really really wish I hadn't blocked this because uh, before blocking it was super dense um, it was just the perfect size um, and after blocking it kind of uh, stretched out the brioche it still fits but um, it's just a little bit more slouchy actually it might have shrunk back do have to do that <laughs> but no it's it's a little bit um, it's a little bit more slouchy than it was because it was just the perfect size and I love it and uh, so I'm not keeping this one this is for um, one of my sisters-in-law I have four um, and this is for the sister that loves pink and I used one pink yarn and it's showing up a bit warmer than it is because of the lights I have here um, so it's a two color brioche hat I paired it with uh, a simple white yarn from Stash and so in the inside it's pink but you know you can't see the flower pattern um, and the outside you can see the white main color I just love it I love 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 it um, the brim so last time um, you saw the middle portion of the hat because I hadn't finished the crown yet and um, I had done a provisional cast on so I would uh, do the brim later because I did not want uh, the pink yarn to run out close to the crown so I just finished the brioche por uh, portion first and then um, I could continue the rib for as long as I had yarn turns out I had more than enough yarn I still have yarn left over uh, so there really was no need to worry <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad that I did and for the brim I did a one by one ribbing uh, not twisted just one by one I believe that's in the pattern as well and to cast off I kitchenered the live stitches back to the first round of the brim which is very advanced <laughs> I'm not going to explain it <laughs> because I'm not even sure that I understand it but um, usually with Kitchener stitch you Kitchener two sets of live stitches together uh, but for this one I Kitchenered one set of live stitches together with um, an existing round um, so that was interesting <laughs> And it worked. I wasn't sure that it was gonna show up nicely, but it totally worked. And um, yeah, so I did that to the outside. Um, and yes, turns out it was just really nice. And it's very stretchy too, because um, I don't want to stretch it too much. <laughs> but um, that was my main concern, that I was binding off um, um, a ribbing with Kitchener stitch and Kitchener stitch only results in um, mm, stockinette stitches like only knit stitches um, but it turned out great so I just I think I just didn't pull too much uh, when I did the Kitchener stitch because I do think there's definitely a possibility that you can over tighten it and that it would be too tight to act as a uh, brim 
but yes I really really love how this hat came out um, the only thing that I would change next time is that I would use an even smaller um, needle because I already used a smaller needle I went down from a 5.5 to a 4.5 which is from a US 9 to a US 7 and I would go down even even more because um, yeah just because of the blocking um, it was the perfect size before blocking um, yeah but then I also don't want to gift somebody something that should never be washed you know <laughs> I do want them to be able to wash their hats even though no one probably ever washes their hats but um, yeah and also as a knitter now I feel like nothing is properly finished until I block it um, yeah, but for this, <laughs> I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't, but, um, yeah, it's just for next time, I know, smaller needles, um, so it won't stretch that much, because brioche is very, very loose compared to regular knitting, but yeah, overall, very, very pleased, and, uh, it was a very quick hat, I don't know if that's due to the brioche, um, do you think that I, you know, enjoy the process so much or because of the Aran wig yarn? I think it's probably a combination uh, of those factors. So let's mark our progress on my board over there. I really should have podcasted sooner because it's very dark, but I'll see if I can um, edit things to be a bit brighter. Uh, so the pink hat here is finished. Ta-da! That is four out of nine projects done. <sighs> Again, please don't remind me <laughs> how little time I have until Christmas. But moving along, I have cast on the new hat. And this one is going a little bit slower, simply because I can't make up my mind about the charts. Um, this one is going to be for my father-in-law. And I think I picked the right colors for him. So it's the same hat pattern, or the same cast on numbers, I, sh I should say, for the home hat. Um, so that's 120 stitches in the round, increase round, and um, yeah, loads of ribbing. But um, yeah, that's, I believe, the key to good fitting hats, long ribbing, because uh, you can just roll it up and, you know, if, if you fold the ribbing it will have a much snugger fit <clears throat> than if you just leave it like this. Um, I did change the first color work chart. This one is not in the pattern. It's just uh, one that I made up and you can recognize that one from the pattern. Can you see it there? It's really, really getting too dark. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have podcasted earlier. Um, yeah, so I'm up to here. Um, I only have a bit more to go before crown decreases. I think just one more chart. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. <laughs> yeah, so I think one more chart and then decreases. Hats are really, really fast, y'all. So uh, you can definitely squeeze a couple hats out before the holiday season. And yeah, it's just really, really fun. I've never been much of a hat knitter. Um, you'll know that from one of the previous episodes. Basically the first one where I started to um, get into podcasting again. Um, 
yeah, I really wasn't a hat netter, but uh, I'm a total convert. Um, they are so quick. Um, and now that I've kind of cracked the code um, for getting good fitting hats, they're actually enjoyable. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend. <laughs> and I love color work. You guys know that about me. And I had a lot of leftovers, so I'm using mostly Scapies Metropolis, but uh, the color that I'm using for the brim, or the yarn I'm using for the brim, is some um, onion yarn. I think their brand name is actually Onion DK, because they're from Denmark. Um, I got this in a yarn ball swap a couple years ago. A lot of years ago maybe four or five years ago um, and it came with a hat pattern uh, but then <laughs> I tried it and then I frogged it um, I really wasn't much of a hat knitter uh, and it had this uh, color in there and uh, a red one of the same series um, I don't have a tag but yeah so I couldn't tell you which onion DK yarn it is but um, I think I remember it had silk in there, but I'm not sure. But in any case, um, it was the perfect color. And it's just a slightly bit thinner, uh, thicker than the uh, Scapies Metropolis yarn. So, yeah, it's just perfect. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Yeah, a very manly hat. <laughs> Yes, very masculine. I'm I'm um, satisfied with this choice. Um, so let's mark that progress. Oh, how much would you say this is? It's over halfway for sure. Or maybe it's just halfway. It's just a bit over halfway. Let's do that. Okay. So, and that's going to be color work hat number six. Um, well, it's hat number six. Yes, so let's mark that up. There. Okay, hmm, I really want to get started on that one because that's kind of messing with my head. <laughs> it feels like I'm skipping one. Yes, but the beret, I just, I just have to Ravelry search for a nice pattern because, yeah, otherwise I'm not going to have much progress. So that was this hat. I haven't started any other hats. I did start a sock. <laughs> I started it over the weekend <clears throat> because, um... I felt like I didn't have enough hand knit socks that I'm not precious about. So um, my subtle sock collection socks, I'm not letting myself wear them yet. You know, one pair I'm wearing them, uh, and it's kind of an experiment because I want uh, I want to use it for a video on how you can clean up your socks after a while. Um, you know. Uh, glean it and uh, wash it properly and you know all of that um, but I don't really have enough pairs of socks that I can just wear whenever um, so I started a new pair and this is with West Yorkshire spinners um, their sock yarn this is a DK sock yarn so yay very very fast um, and this is a bit scratchy, but it's also like, um, it's virgin wool, so it's not merino, it's just, yeah, um, gets the job done. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I think it's a great yarn to knit with. Uh, the second sock is looking like this, and I'm not making them matchy, um, on purpose. And yeah, so these are just going to be very hard wearing, um, yeah, 
and I'm not going to be princessy about them. And I used, um, I knit them to up, which I always do, and I used my new heel recipe. Um, this is the same heel that is included in my Subtle Sock Collection ebook. Um, although for the Subtle Sock Collection it is color work, so it's stripy. So it's a gusset, a shorter heel, and a heel flap. And that is very unusual for toe-up socks. Uh, but also one of the best fitting heels that I've ever knit. So I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, and I am going to be uh, filming a tutorial video for my patrons very shortly. Um, I will have that up somewhere in December, I think, um, or perhaps uh, late November, I'm not sure. Uh, I just need a day where I can record. Um, yeah, and I have to settle on a sock yarn that I'm going to use for the tutorial. That's the, <laughs> that's the most important thing. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this heel is included in my subtle sock collection and I'm also going to be putting the recipe on my Patreon page with a tutorial, um, for just the heel. Um, uh, I'm going to be showing you some calculations, how you can make it work for any pattern. Um, and you're good to go. But um, yeah, I really like it on vanilla socks, um, but this is perfect for color work socks, especially because uh, color work socks are often very tight and shorter heels may not give you the room that you need for your ankle, or you know, it may give you the room that you need, but then it will be stretched, which means that the color work will be distorted. Um, so especially for color work socks, it's amazing, but uh, for simple vanilla, no color work socks, I love it. So yes, that is my rainbow pair of socks. I also have some other colorways of this stripey DK sock yarn. So I see many more stripy socks in my future. And then I have been working on some embroidery, which um, if I remember to put the clips in, you will have seen in the um, introduction, no, not the introduction, like the small clips I put in before the podcast starts. It's um, an embroidery kit from Maison Saju. Um, and I love it. This is the print. So the pattern is on this side. It's basically this, but then larger. It's a fantasy print. Um, it has animals on there, but they're not real animals. They're fantasy animals and just a lot of flowers, a lot of colors. Um, and... The Saju is the name of the company. Uh, you can buy from them directly, Maison Saju, um, and a lot of shops stock their embroidery kits and they have a lot of stuff. Um, they also have fabrics and tape measures. Oh, such a cute tape measure. Oh, I got one of theirs. I'm not sure where I have it, but... Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can show you. Um, also has their name on here, Saju. It's so cute. So it's a wooden tape measure. <laughs> and this is a fabric ribbon. It's in centimeters. Um, and to wind it up again, you have to turn the little wooden button here. It's very, very cute. And they have a lot of embroidery kits and other fun haberdashery stuff for, um, you know, that you could possibly gift this holiday season. It's just really fun. And um, earlier this year, um, I did the Cozy Moments Make Long, and uh, it was very exciting and very successful. 
um, but also a lot of work and I bought this embroidery kit <clears throat> to kind of um, uh, reward myself for all of the hard work I put in um, and you know that was in February <laughs> and it's November and I've only just started it but um, so this is an embroidery kit for a cushion it's gonna be a very small cushion and um, I have the embroidery fabric in here and um, the backing fabric I have I don't have it in the project bag, but um, there's a really cute um, fabric for the back of the cushion. And you get these embroidery thread and cute cards. And they are the prettiest colors. <laughs> Even if you're not really seeing them with this lighting. And there's one card that I love the most, which has five colors on there. Yeah. And so I have started. And this is my progress so far. And I'm just really enjoying it. And uh, <laughs> I'm happy that the white space in between is just, you know, um, you don't have to embroider it because I've definitely had embroidery kits where all of the white space was actually white embroidery stitches. So I'm happy that it isn't. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's going to be really small, the cushion. But um, yeah, it's just really cute. Um, and I just wanted to say, because I shared this on Instagram and a couple people were freaking out that I didn't start in the middle. <laughs> Um, and I do remember from other embroidery kits that I had that there was kind of this star in the middle. Um, and it would be clear that you start there. Um, and you know, it's been years since I've embroidered. Um, and for this one, so I'm, I don't really want to show you the pattern. Um, okay, let's do this. And for this one, it doesn't have a star anywhere in the middle. It doesn't, um, say what the middle is. Uh, it just says, okay, this is a repeat. And, um, so you have a red outline for the repeat and then a green outline for the cushion, if you're actually making the cushion. And both of them start from the top left. So <laughs> I started from the top left, um, but I do get it. Um, usually when you have an embroidery pattern, it's not a repeat. It's uh, one thing. And of course you want that to be in the middle of your um, fabric. So I totally get that. But also like, um, <laughs> I thought it was weird that people were freaking out about it. Um, yeah, so I am quite happy with my progress and yeah, uh, I will say it's very difficult to see which colors to use. There are four shades of red in here and sometimes you're like, okay, <laughs> which shade is this one? <laughs> And um, yeah, it's just sometimes it's just impossible to know. So um, yeah, I'll just use one of them. And if I run out, I'll see. <laughs> um, I mean, I won't just use one of the shades, I, whatever. Um, yes, so this has been bringing me a lot of joy. And it's in my project bag that I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Fest. Uh, this is a collaboration between Hey Mama Wolf and Minook Bags. Minook. And it's hand dyed. So Minook makes the bags. And then Hey Mama Wolf, uh, who is Yule, she um, dyed the fabric. And it's 
it's really really nice so I'm really really happy with this bag um, <laughs> Uh, it wasn't my first purchase at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, but I made my way over there pretty quickly on day one. Um, and I was very pleased that they still had this one. I mean, I was sad that they didn't have the pink ones anymore, <laughs> but blue is the next best thing. So I was happy with those. Okay, I think I have to call it a day <laughs> because this is really not a good podcast environment anymore. <laughs> I need to get some better lights, y'all. The last thing that I wanted to say was that the 30% off discount code for my Subtle Saw collection ends on Sunday, Sunday 15th of November. Um, so you can use code MOMO, uh, my cat is called MOMO, um, which you spell as capital M-O-M-O, um, you can use that code in either my Ravelry shop or in my own New Leaf web shop and it will take the price of the ebook from 21.99 euro to 15 something. Uh, 15.50 I think. Um, so yes, that's a pretty hefty discount and it's almost over. So um, if you don't have the ebook yet, please do uh, hop over to my uh, one of my pattern shops. And thank you so, so much to um, to those of you who have already bought the ebook. It really means a lot to me. It has been an amazing success and I'm gonna do more ebooks for sure um, because yeah, it was just so much fun. And I'm glad that you all like it so much. Um, and I'm gonna be sending out some newsletters to remind you. So um, be sure that you are on my newsletter list. And there are lots more things coming this year. So subscribe anyway, okay? <laughs> um, and I hope you are doing well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.